Hello again, Tri Community. It's RJ back with another video. Let's get to it. Today's random Mike Schmidt item of the day: the 1980 World Series VHS tape. That's right. Um, long time ago, obviously there wasn't DVDs. There were just VHS, and I was getting a lot of these World Series tapes. Uh, Major League Baseball started kicking them out um, around about the mid 80s, I guess. Um, when VHS became a thing and you could have all these at home for home use, they put out a whole series where everyone looked like this, same box, same style, except they changed the year and the participants on this logo. And you could get every one that they had put out to date. And I really thought about that for a while, but then eventually in the late 80s, early 90s, when DVDs took over, uh, Major League Baseball actually put out a boxed set of DVDs showing all of the World Series videos to date back then. And I really wanted that too, but it was like um, $150, $175 back then. It's still available today, I'm sure. I can get it online somewhere, and I likely will eventually, but haven't pulled the trigger on that. Uh, just something I want to have for my collection. I want to have, as a, a set collector, I want to have every World Series video ever made. So... But this one is from 1980, and it's got Mr. Schmidt involved, so that's my random Mike Schmidt collectible of the day. My random baseball collectible of the day is another kind of cheesy thing, I'm sorry, but I like to show off things my kids get me. And this is just one of those small metal fake storage lockers that they sell at Walmart and places like that for storing things. And this is something the kids picked up for me on my birthday or Father's Day or something one year. Um, and I have it on my shelf because it's a baseball collectible. It says Phillies on it. It's got locked here still. I think I lost the key a long time ago, but that's one of those things I could probably, you, anybody can probably pick it easily, that lock, so I'm not worried about the fact that it's locked. Um, but it's something I have on my shelf because, you know, the, the kids, they're older now, but they still send me things that are Phillies or baseball related, so I put them on my shelf. I keep them in my collection. Today's trivia question. Um, we're going to highlight some rookies today because we're going to go 180 degrees from rookies when we talk about the baseball collect item today. Um, but I have a, here a set of seven um, chrome, Bowman Chrome Prospect cards from this year. Um, this is the prize. I uh, got Jeter Downs from the Red Sox, J.J. Blade from the Marlins, Tristan Casas for the Red Sox, Luis Garcia from the Phillies. This is Luis Garcia from the Phillies, not to be confused by Luis Gar with Luis, Luis Garcia from the Nationals, or I know there's another Luis Garcia. So uh, Jordan Adams from the Angels, Reed Detmer from the Angels, and Bryson Scott from the Phillies. So Seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Bowman Prospect Rookie Cards. Uh, if you could answer this question about rookies. Uh, to date, who is the only, which, which is the only franchise, pay attention to the words, which is the only franchise that has yet to produce a Rookie of the Year winner? Uh, give me the answer to that question. Remember, email it, be the first person to email it to me. Uh, and I will send you out those seven prospect cards. I'll include a recap of the trivia question and my email in the description below. So please take time to ponder that answer. Today's baseball item I want to show you is something I've been talking about for a while. I want to move this out of the way. I want to show off real quick my Hall of Fame collection and explain to you how I do it. I don't want to go through every card. There's like over... I think there's over th close to 300 players in the Hall of Fame. Uh, but this is my collection. Let me move this in a little closer. Let's see what we can do here. Stand it up so the glare is a little off. So my collection of Hall of Fame cards, they're not valuable. You know, I guess some of them might be as much as $5, you know. I have some original Fleer uh, 60 you know, great to the game cards here. Some period era, 69, 74. So you'll see a scattering of manufacturers. A lot of common collection, a lot of reprints, few originals. 
Uh, and I'm always looking for cards with the full stats on the back. Because, like I said in previous videos, I enjoy... Oh, that one doesn't focus at all. I enjoy having... Okay, let me close it off there. I enjoy having a player's career stats so that you know why they're Hall of Fame worthy. I don't know why the, the camera doesn't want to focus. It's fixated on the, the background there, so I'm trying to hide the background. Go away, don't look, don't look. Focus on this, focus on the card. That's not playing a lot. I enjoy having the career stats um, on, my, on the back of the cards in my Hall of Fame collection so I can see what they did. So I'm gonna flip through each page um, pretty quickly because I'll, I'll stop occasionally but uh, take some time to pause and look if you get a chance I don't want to spend all day long going through the Hall of Famers I will pause at a couple of them there's a couple of really cool ones some umpire cards uh, there's an original 67 Ernie Banks card uh, several different Negro League variations on cards uh, you'll see a lot of this, and this is important pretty soon. This is a, a set called the uh, Baseball Immortals. I'm not even sure who put this out. Boy, my car is not, this, this camera is not going to focus now. I don't know why. Let me see if I can't. There we go. Try and change the focus a little bit on who it's looking at. So this is a set. I'm not even sure who put this set out, but... um. It had um, all the Hall of Famers in it, practically. And um, this one was Borgen Bulkley, an early executive, a pioneer. And these kind of cards will come become important pretty soon. Uh, don't, need, don't need to describe why right now, but we'll see it soon. So, uh, Jim Bunning, original 66 Jim Bunning card. Like I said, you'll see some of these original cards. Uh, I got a lot of these 2013, starting to get some of these 2013 cards of Hall of Famers, which is great, because they have the career high, career stats on the back of the cards, which I love. Um, some modern cards, too. This was uh, 2001, 2002, Tops. It was a Tops card, uh, top set that had Roberto Clemente highlighted, and this is a, an actual card from the base flagship set that year, and it has his career stats on the back. A lot of these are origins of baseball from pre-1900 stars, and a lot of these, particularly my Ty Cobb card, is actually a Conlon collection card because I'm not going to have a real Ty Cobb card in this set. So you're talking about like a dollar for a Ty Cobb Conlon collection, so there's no value here. Um, a lot of Conlon collection, like I said, few umpire cards, a lot of SPs. I like the SPs and the greats because, and the Fleer greats because they had Hall of Famers. Even got some manager cards whenever I could. I'm going to show off the Dawson thing to show you what I do with a lot of my cards. Um, Andre Dawson, let me fix the focus here again. Andre Dawson, this is his 1993 Topps card with the Cubs, all right? On the back, though... It's a different card. It's his 97 Fleer version, I do believe. Um, but this had, let me see if I can adjust that focus again. Do, 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 so we can bring in, concentrate on this. Oh, it jumps. Anyway, this is his 97 Fleer card. It had been in the, Marlin, in the Marlins, but no one remembers him playing for the Marlins. But it, that card had his career stats because he never played in 97. He stopped in 96. They produced a card for him, but he had retired in the offseason before they released this card. So it's part of the set, and it has his career stats. So I will do that with a lot of my cards. I will put the, uh, a period piece, uh, put in front of the card, in the front sleeve, a, uh, a modern era card from when we remember the guy playing. And then on the back, a later era that shows his stats. I do, I do that a lot here, so... You can see my Joe DiMaggio card is an Upper Deck Legends card. You're not going to get rookie cards of Hall of Famers in this set. This is one of the cards I want to show off only because of how I've done this. Now, this is a guy named Barney Dreyfus. Barney Dreyfus was an executive owner of the Pittsburgh franchise back in the 1800s and nearly into the early 1900s, okay? Now, 
What's interesting about this card is it's not a real card. It's something I made myself. On the back, it has his Hall of Fame plaque. Because there is no card I could find anywhere in the universe that pictures Barney Dreyfus. Uh, so in order to provide placeholders for cards like that, where I don't have anything of the player or the executive or, or what have you, I simply made my own card. I would find a picture on Google, or Google Images, and I'd find a, a cool looking image of that person. In this case, it actually was a pretend card. Somebody had manufactured this, and this image was available on Google. Downloaded the image, picked out his the Hall of Fame plaque is with what the back of all these quote unquote manufactured cards are, and then I literally pasted it onto an old card, you know, a penny card. So this is in a couple of them. I think I got under ten now where I don't have a real card of them. But this is what I have as placeholders. And I'll show you some of those a little later on. Here's an actual Don, Di Don Drysdale, 69. Billy Evans was an umpire. Like I said, a lot of uh, Conlon collection for the older players, a whole bunch. Here's a cool, the Raleigh Fingers card up here is the 80, um, is 86 tops. He didn't play in 86, so that card's a great card because it's got him in the Ruse uniform. It's an actual card but it has his career stats because he stopped playing uh, right around there. So that's a cool card. Here's a cool actual 62 Nelly Fox card. Corners are all dinged and dented. There's scratches and scrapes in it. So like I said, it's not worth anything, uh, but I have it. Here's a 74 Bob Gibson. Here's a cool card. I was able to acquire, uh, in, in my attempt to get all Hall of Fame autographs, a Pat Gillick. Uh, now, the reason this is equally significant is Pat Gillick was the uh, general manager of the uh, Phillies when they won the World Series in, 80, in, in 08, 19, in 2008. But before that, he was the general manager of the Blue Jays and the Orioles and a number of other teams. And wherever he went, he produced winners. So um, he had ended up in the Hall of Fame for that reason. But this here, I think this one, is this one even numbered? I don't think so. No, it's a Patini. 2011, Cooperstown. I don't think it's, I'm not sure if it was made in 2011, no, 2015, but Pat Gillick got in in 2011. And this is an on card auto of Pat Gillick. And the reason I have this card and I'm so happy to have it is because Pat Gillick was one of the people in the Hall of Fame that I didn't have a card for. I had created one of those manufactured cards for him. And then suddenly I found this card. I kept Googling, you know, on eBay, Pat Gillick cards, nothing. You know, they were all this kind of autograph card, all of them. And they were all slabbed. And you could see none of these cards are slabbed. So eventually I found this one that was loose, no slab, and it was for a decent price. So I snagged it. And he is now my card in my Hall of Fame set, Pat Gillick. But it's the autograph card. So I thought that was kind of cool. Here's my junior, just a random, uh, I guess it's 95 tops. I mean, it's, there's billions of Jeter cards out there, certainly. That's the one I chose. Here's another one down here. This is Ned Hanlon, a uh, player, manager, owner, Baltimore Orioles stock in the late 1890s. And you can see on the back, it's the uh, Hall of Fame plaque, because this is one I made myself. I don't have any of this. The Tony Gwynn one here is from the uh, Topps All-Time Great set or all-time fan, tops fan favorite sets back in the, uh, I want to say this early 2000s or late 1990s, that one, that set came out. So that those are great because they have career stats on them. Here's what I was talking about. I made a lot of these originally. I took that baseball immortal style and um, I would find the image that they had of that person. Oh, actually, no, this one's an original one. Oh, I forgot I got a Will Herridge. He was a, Will Harridge was a, a president of one of the leagues for a long time. And I actually got this, this, that card. I do, I do have a couple somewhere in here where I manufactured um, the cards with that design. Cal Hubbard is one. Nope, Cal Hubbard's umpire. That's a real umpire card from that set. Trevor Hoffman up there. Here's a interesting Randy Johnson one. Um... I just thought this kind of this card was cool. I got this loose in a in a pack 
one day, um, I think it was a break or somebody sent this to me and it just does, it has no fit in any of my collections. So I use that, but I also have his, uh, 2008 card with a lot of career statistics. This is not complete. He had a couple more years after this where he played, but this was a good example of a, of a career stat card that I had. I just put that behind this one because you know, this pinnacle card, it's, it's just, just so out of place. Um, I just, there's a good place for it, you know, it's, it's, it's a Hall of Famer, so why not? So there's my Reggie, 1980 Tops Reggie I have in my Hall of Fame set. A couple more Archives cards. Chipper Jones, I got to find a better Chipper Jones only because that doesn't have good stats from him. And I, I, for some reason, I just don't have any uh, late in his career single cards. I have all the top sets, but I don't have a single one of Chipper Jones lying around. Uh, Sandy Koufax, oh, it was great, great to have this one. This is a cool archives, Sandy Koufax, from the last couple of years, which has his career stats, which I love, of course. Uh, my Mickey Mantle is a 53 archives, although there are several I could have chosen. A um, couple trivia question things here. Um, you got a guy here named Larry McPhail, and right next to him is a guy named Lee McPhail. Larry McPhail, Lee McPhail, father and son. Um, trivia question for you guys, if you ever get, if you ever hear this one from me, if I forget, and if you guys want to astound your friends, who are the only father and son elected to the Hall of Fame? And they're not players. Neither one was ever a player in the major leagues. Larry McPhail and Lee McPhail. Also, right here, Effa Manley, who is the only female who has a plaque in the Hall of Fame gallery. F. Manley was an owner of the Negro League teams back in the day, back in the 40s and 50s, maybe even a little earlier. Um, and she has a spot in the Hall of Fame, a plaque there. So, a couple little trivia questions for you if you ever want to, you know, test your friend's knowledge. I love my Pedro Fleer tradition card. My Willie Mays is a 53 archives. Couple other cards. I'm gonna go flip a little faster now. I have an original '82 Brewer uh, Molitor. I have a nice Joe Morgan with on the back a 13 Archives with the stats. That was nice to get. '80 Eddie Murray. Uh, hard to get these um, um, executive cards, but I was happy to have that. A lot of different satchel pages out there. I went with the Fleer Greats because it's got his stats on it. Cool Tony Perez, Cincinnati Reds card from with that Donner's Classics. And that's cool because it has his career stats on the back just as it is. Here's a nice Palmer 81, but I also have a uh, 13 archives on the back to give me the stats that I'm looking for. Nice Piazza archives has many of his stats, but not complete. And my Mo, that's an actual uh, 2014 or 2013 Mariano Rivera card, 2012. So that's got a lot of his stats on the back. My Cal is just a uh, fan favorites one, full stats. Tim Raines is a unique kind of card too. Let me show you the Tim Raines one because I got here a 91 tops. Uh, Tim Raines got him on the Expos. On the back, though, is an archives card. This is not uh, a, a, during his player career, this is a 19, 20, 2019 Topps Archives. But it's got those stats that I didn't have. So, like, this one goes up to 1990. This one starts at about uh, 89 and continues. So, between the two of them, I figure, well, I got, I got his complete stats that way. So... <laughs> So here, I got a cool Robin Roberts card. Um, I actually picked this up from Jabs, or not Jabs, but um, John Jabs uh, the pa over at the Passes Live. One time he was doing an auction, and I think I don't know how much I paid for this, five bucks, 10 bucks maybe. But I thought that image looks really good. And in the back, I have a stat card. Uh, it's um, 2019 Topps Archive, so it's not complete, but that's kind of nice. An original Brooks Robinson, that's his uh, 77 card. 
This one actually isn't stat complete because he did play through 77, so there would be, be some more stats on that one, but, you know, it is what it is. Frank Robinson, 72 uh, tops. So I do have a couple, like I said, actual Hall of Fame era cards. My Ruth is one of the uh, tops complete set inserts that came out several years ago. I even got a Bud Selly card. Here's an example of one of those manufactured ones. All right, so John Sherholtz is a um, longtime general manager of the Braves. The entire times the Braves were undefeated as NL East champs, that 14-year run, it was Bobby Cox's manager, John Sherholtz's general manager, and obviously Ted Turner is still the owner, I think. There are no cards of Sherholder that I can find that aren't slabbed or autographed that cost like you know $200 because they're autographed. And uh, until I find a decent one that's loose, and that I can get for a decent price, this guy is my placeholder. I had a lot more of those, but I've been doing better, knocking them down here and there. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. It's kind of flipping through the last bit of them here. A little nice late Don Sutton scorecard, so it's got better stats. All about the stats, people, all about the stats. This is a Jim Tomey Archives card, so it has more stats. Oh, I know this one. Actually, that's a Jim Tomey. That's his actual 93 card, so that's got some early stats. I'm going to have to find an older one. Here's a Bill Vec. That's another one that I manufactured one long time. Crazy owner for the White Sox and the Indians over the years. I uh, get down towards the end. A couple more of these uh, manufactured ones. Every once in a while, I did this one, too. This one's an interesting one. Deacon White, 1900 player. 19, or 19, 1800s era player. Um, this is a manufactured card. Whenever I had to do a manufactured card, I would try to do this. There are Goodwin Champion cards of Deacon White. This is a copy of one. I predict Goodwin's Champions. And this is the back of a different card that had to, uh, a description of who he was. So those two were paper cutouts that I pasted onto an old card. And that's how I made my placeholders, if you recall. But sometimes I did a better job than the uh, the the um, plaque style. So this is another manufactured one down here. Vic Willis, Pit Pittsburgh Pirates pitcher in the turn of the century. And then it ends up with uh, Robin Yount. Right now, the number of people in the Hall of Fame. Here's an actually early win, 62 card, I believe, or 61. Just showing off that I do have a couple older cards, but again, they're not worth a lot. Uh, I like that right now it ends perfectly, but uh, every year they're adding more, so every year this is going to have to expand. But So this is my Hall of Fame set, people. When I talk about my Hall of Fame collection, it is not impressive. You know, I, ha I, th I think it's impressive that I have one card of everybody in the Hall of Fame because it's hard to find cards. And, and again, I don't have... I do not have cards of everybody in the Hall of Fame, so to speak, because some of the cards I made myself... Uh, but I am trying to get one card of everybody in the Hall of Fame, an actual produced card by a noted manufacturer. Um, that's something I have a goal to do. I'm real close. I'm, I'm less than 10 away. But the, the, those 10, are, like I said, are the um, executives, the owners, the commissioners, the umpires. That's who I'm still missing. So anyway, just want to show off my Hall of Fame card set after talking about it so long. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like, subscribe, and all that. And I'll see you again soon with another video. Take care.